Train the muscles, not the joints. So welcome back to Natural Line Bodybuilding, and today I'm gonna to do a workout. It's like a live workout, pretty much live. Basically, I'm just gonna film all the way through, all the quiet moments within, all that kind of stuff, in between sets. And uh, I'll be talking a little bit in between, and maybe sharing some advice of some sort, if something comes to mind, we'll see. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. I haven't done one of these for a long time. I used to do quite a few of them, and I know a few of you guys really like them and you missed them, so I figured, okay, let's, let's just do one. Why not, right? Why not? Why, why wouldn't I do it? Okay. So we're gonna do some bench presses first. We're gonna start with some bench. So you notice that I, uh, first of all, if you notice that I'm in focus or out of focus, that's just because I have it certain, the camera set up in a certain way, so it's focusing here or whatever. Uh, so yeah, don't, don't worry about that. I might be in focus or out. Uh, second of all, you notice in the warm-up set, I don't go to failure, but I do get a good amount of blood going because I want to make sure that blood's in there. Sometimes I'll pause at the bottom as well and just hold the weight in a stretch position. So that way I help that muscle get used to that stretch, right? So. When I start using heavier weight, then it is used to the range of motion I'm going to be using, right? So, ultimately, your body's a funny thing, right? Sometimes it'll surprise you. Sometimes what will happen is that you will uh, be doing a normal range of motion that you always do, and your body all of a sudden feels tight or something feels off. So, it's important to reset and to reestablish that connection with the muscle and the body and the exercise. You know what, I might start actually doing more of these for the Patreon supporters. So I'm going to do a poll on Patreon and see if they want more of these kind of things. Because I do a lot of straight instructional videos, but uh, I know there is uh, definitely uh, some people that like this stuff. Like to watch me goof around in front of the camera, train, and maybe have a good training session, maybe have a bad training session. Sometimes it happens, right? But the important part about the warm up is you have to know that your body is never the same. One day the body is different than maybe another day, right? So it, it's important for you to re establish that connection, um, make sure that it's, it's moving right. Because I can't tell you how many times I've moved funny the day before a workout. Like, say, I remember one buddy I was wrestling with in the gym, he challenged me to a wrestling match. This was years and years ago. But anyway, I started wrestling and I, and I felt fine during the wrestling, but I actually tweaked my back just very subtly. And then the next day when I was squatting, I noticed I was kind of weak. So thank God I warmed up because if I didn't, then maybe I would have tweaked my back or something. So this is important, right? It's important to always treat the moment as the moment. Don't, and, and there's a, something very spiritual about this, but don't, project your past onto this moment so that way you really deal with this moment as it is. This really is important with training because there's so many people that don't do that. They go into the gym and they project, oh, I did this last year and then they come in the gym and they try to do it again and then they hurt themselves or something. Right? I'm not in love with the bench, but it works. It's 
Let's go 295. Let's do 295. See how, did you see what's going on behind the scenes, right? Now I know I've explained it a million times, but when I bench from here to here, sorry, is my, is the video camera set up right? Okay, yeah, it is set up right, all right. Okay, so when I bench from here to here, I feel chest, but once I go from here and then above the shoulders, this is, this is all delt. I feel a lot of delt, and that's just for me. I mean, maybe because my arms are shaped funny, maybe because my arms are shaped funny or something, I don't know, but, the bottom line is that that's where I feel this tension. So this is why I do the reps that I do. I'm trying to make sure that my chest is hitting failure first, right? Uh, for another person, it might be different. They might not feel so much delt stress through that upper range of the motion, uh, but that's where I feel it, right? Might be because of my hockey injuries, but I can honestly say before I dislocated a shoulder in hockey, I also bench pressed the same way. It always felt right. I never really locked out of the top unless I'm trying to get a bit of a rest there. And even then I don't totally lock. I just basically so, almost lock, right? To get a bit of a rest and then I'll come down again for another extra rep if I need to take a quick rest, right? You have to adjust the pants, right? The pants are right, the bench can't, can't work, right? Now I've been doing floor presses for a while, so I just got back into bench presses uh, about a workout or two ago, so yeah, so I'm getting used to this groove again. I just reestablished a camera there. I shut it off and shut it on for just one second. So I had about, I've had about a minute rest so far already, just so you know. So if you guys are taking, you know, if you guys are taking notes on how much rest I'm taking in between sets, that's around what I'm doing, right? So my plan is to do five sets of 295. And I'm going pretty much to failure. If I was doing straight strength training, then I wouldn't be going to failure, as you know. So I'm actually starting to write a strength training program right now. I'm working on it a little bit, uh, so that'll be available on my website at some point for bench. But uh, but anyway, I'm just playing around with my training right now and just seeing where I'm at. And then, then I'll probably start pushing the, the weight on the bench a bit and doing some strength training, right? So, okay, so it's about two minutes or so. I kind of get a feel. That's mostly what I do. I just get a feel when I feel like I've pretty much recovered from the set and then I go, right? It's about, it usually takes around two minutes, though. So. So bench is, my bench isn't at the highest it's been, but like I said, I took a break from bench pressing, so my groove is coming around again. I'm getting the groove back, right? So how still I got a groove back, kind of like that going on with the bench press here. Okay. So I did it again. I was just checking the clip to see if I was in the shot and found out that my, uh, my face was in the shot the whole time. See, so the benefit of the live 
stuff here. It's uh, you don't get the perfect shots. Not that my shots are perfect, but you don't get the you get less less perfect shots. So, so lately, what I've been doing is I've been drinking a protein shake during my uh, workouts most of the time. I've been drinking like uh, I've been drinking more like uh, the kale type smoothies that I did in my other video. You can see how I made those. But sometimes I'll have this, like this is not coffee, this is like a chicory root kind of blend. It's like a something to drink, right? I like something sweet, so I sweeten it with stevia, tiny bit of milk, and uh, chicory root. It tastes pretty good, but there's no caffeine in it or anything, but yeah, I like to drink something when I'm working out. <clears throat> All right. I believe this is set number three. Set number three. My grip is a little bit off there. But the hard part about training in the garage too is that my garage is on a slope a little bit and although I've leveled it out quite a bit with the wood here underneath the floor, I kind of leveled out with some plywood. It's not quite not quite perfect. So I notice my bench always goes up when I go to the gym because I'm on a level bench. So okay, two more sets here. The front delt stretch here. Yeah. So I just had a bit of a conversation with a dude on uh, on my comments. <laughs> He was mad at me because I wouldn't answer his question directly because he's saying that he's tried everything with his training and he cannot find out why he's not putting on muscle mass and if I would give some insight on this. So based on his question, based on him saying that he's tried every technique, all this kind of stuff, and I mean he listed a certain techniques that he tried and everything, looked like he was quite thorough and uh, I'm also assuming that he's watched my videos so he's also you know, uh, had a good um, education when it comes down to my perspective on training. So he said, hey, can you just give me some insight? I'm like, well, you know, you can book a consultation because obviously your situation is complicated because uh, if you watched all my videos and they haven't helped you, and if you tried all the things that you listed and that hasn't helped you, then maybe we need to have a deeper discussion about what's going on. Now, because of this, he got mad at me and said that I'm a charlatan or some sort of, you know, car salesman type or whatever because I'm just trying to sell them a consultation, but the bottom line is that uh, <laughs> a lot of people on the internet don't understand just because you're giving away free information doesn't mean you don't need to find a way to also support it if you're gonna really spend specific amounts of time with certain people. So uh, it's not like you're, you're trying to take advantage of people or anything. Anybody that does business or anybody that helps other people for a living understands this. Uh, if you wanna help people, uh, helping is great. Just like if you give blood, giving blood's great. But if you give away all your blood, you can't help anybody in the future, right? You can't give away blood in the future. So um, it was kind of a funny discussion. You know, some people, they misunderstand your intentions just because you are trying to find a way to sustain giving away something doesn't mean that you are a charlatan. It just means you're trying to make it sustainable, right? So interesting generation we have now. Interesting people where they're uh, entitled with getting free information and then they assume that you're just their slave to uh, answer their questions and every whim because you've given away something, that means you're supposed to give away even more, right? So, it's almost like somebody with guns are like, dance, boy, dance. They start shooting you in the feet and just telling you what to do, so. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't fit that ideal, right? And some people think because I'm a spiritual teacher that somehow I'm, uh, I just lay on the ground and then let everybody walk on me. <laughs> so, <laughs> a lot of times I'm pretty surprised when they find out I'm not like that, but. But you know, I love giving away things, and I love helping people, but I, I need to find a way to be able to continue to do it, right? So, uh, I'm looking at my lens right now that I bent by filming the other day, and then the tripod fell over. <laughs> you know, $2,000 lens needs to be replaced sometimes when you have these accidents, right? Where's that money come from, right? So, yeah, funny stuff, man. Funny stuff, but these are the little conversations that happen when we do these live workouts, right? <laughs> Ah. 
Go, one more set. One more set. So you notice with uh, doing upper body movements, you won't need to have as much rest as, say if you're doing legs or something, right? So you'll notice that you're way more out of breath when you're doing legs or squats or deadlifts, you know? Things that really incorporate the whole body, especially legs and lower back, right? So don't be surprised if you need a little bit more rest during those sets, right? Yeah, bench press is almost like a vacation compared to those things, so. Hey, who am I kidding? It is a vacation. Bench presses are a vacation compared to doing heavy deadlifts or squats or any of those movements or lunges even, you know? Uh, so that's why sometimes people do super circuits or super sets and, and they might do buys and tries or maybe chest and, and, and back or something. But then they try to incorporate a superset with legs and they're pleasantly or unpleasantly surprised by everything being thrown off because you're so out of breath from the legs that by the time you get to the shoulders or tries or whatever it is you're supersetting with the legs that you're too worn out to push that other muscle group, right? So in order to compensate for that, you'll have to take more rest. And on a side note, I don't even know if you can actually see my face right now if I'm in the shot or not. So I've been talking to the camera the whole time, but who knows if I'm in the shot. Be back, just take a drink. Okay. Last set. <sighs> So that is my music in the background, just so you know. I'm just playing my music in the background so it'll get copyright strike. But uh, if you want to get my music, it's on my website, naturalgalantbodybuilding.com. So feel free to tune into that. Just get that, uh, get that music. I try to price it uh, below market value because it's very valuable to me. But uh, I am working on the new album. I have another track that I'm working on right now. And uh, I just need two more tracks, that's it. So I know it's been a long time coming, honestly. Just because I've been busy doing the YouTube thing, and then uh, my creative juices are pretty much burned out by the time I get around to actually making music because I've done the video stuff. So yeah, I, I'm almost done though. I almost have, uh, I just have two more tracks. I'll finish this one and then another one and then I'll put up another album. So I don't know what it'll be called yet, but, uh, but it's gonna be the best one yet, I think. I like it, yeah. You know, I'm also impartial, but I like my, you know, I, I find that my music is changing as I go through the motions and learn more. And, and I, I think it's, capturing the emotions I want to capture more effectively. That's the better way to put it, I guess. Okay. Right, that's it. So you notice that last one, I actually rested so that way I can get an extra rep. So that's the only time you'll actually see me go up all the way is to rest so I can kind of push another rep out. So, so obviously you don't have a spotter, but I do have this rack set up so that I won't choke myself out. So if you are gonna be bench pressing at home, this is probably common knowledge for most of you because most of you are pretty advanced that tune into this channel, but uh, if you do bench press at home, if, you, if you're not aware of this, make sure you have a squat rack or some way of spotting yourself and so in case something goes wrong right and sorry if i'm breathing too hard and it sounds kind of uh creepy but uh i just i just did a set of bench presses so that's that's what happened so let's do some bent over rows now i've been doing mostly bent over rows at home now uh barbell most of the time uh just for convenience sake i find i get a good workout i only do three or four sets but i get a good overall back and body pump from it so let's do that
Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to spin you around like that, sorry about that. focus or not, but all right, let's see, let's see how this works out. So I'll move the 225 down and then I'll go to the 315. So it's like the one plate warm up at a time here. So uh, I'll use wrist straps at 315. And sometimes I'll use wrist straps at 225 after multiple sets. Like say I do two or three sets. People always ask me, how'd you get your forearms? You know, I got my forearms just from gripping weight. For some reason my, for, like you can see, watch, see? Can you see that? My forearms just, gripping there's such a big part of that so maybe i'm part eagle or something i don't know maybe an owl I don't, I don't know but the bottom line is that i'll do 225 and if i'm going to do straight sets of 225 obviously i can do you know 20 20 30 almost 40 reps sometimes so i'll have to use wrist straps because my forms will start to give up before my back does but in order to make sure that my forms get a good workout i do one or two sets without the wrist straps and then i'll go use the wrist straps so but right now I'm just going to do a set of this warming up and then I'm going to uh, go into the heavier weight with some wrist straps. So. I'll zoom you in, man. Yeah, you zoomed in, man. You zoomed in. Give out, but but yeah, it's easy. All right, three fifteen now. Check out the shots, right? right here we go.
So I just slide it up and down the legs. And if I have to rest it on the kneecaps, I will for a bit. And then get that extra rep or something. So. All right, I moved the camera. So you can see where I'm at right now anyway, as far as uh, body fat percentage. That's it. Cool, so. Like I said, I'm eating more carbs now and stuff because I'm trying to nourish the body at this point. I'm in a nourishing stage, right? So I'm not over, I'm not trying to over bulk or anything by eating everything in sight, but I'm just trying to eat clean, but eat, uh, not worry about if I eat a little bit extra carbs or not. And the other thing is that I'm also uh, not drinking as much coffee. I kind of cut that out. I only have like one mocha a day or something like that, whereas before sometimes I have a bunch of coffee, like straight coffee from the dripper. So I noticed that was killing my appetite, so I wasn't eating enough. So. That's another reason why you might want to cut back on coffee intake from time to time. Because it is an appetite suppressant. Okay. Here we go. You're a little crooked there. You crooked? Grandpa needs a seat. Here we up there. Probably can't see me anymore, can you? Screw it. If you can't see me, you can't see me. If you can't see me, whatever. You hear my voice, so. Yeah, I'm gonna do two more sets of this. But one thing people forget about with Ben over row is that. And I get this hate all the time because they're like, oh, you've been over rolling during the eights. You're not bending all the way over. But if you look at my lower back, you'll see the lower back part is quite far over. It's just that I'm arched up like this quite a bit with my upper body. So I'm firing all those erector spine in quite, quite well, right? Um, to protect the lower back and also get the right position. So some people think that if you bend over more, you get more upper back work, but you don't. You actually get more lower back work and most of the time your lower back will either tweak or give out long before your upper back does. So uh, believe it or not, that's where I got my upper back development from is that I efficiently used each exercise to accomplish a task, not just do the exercise uh, in the most kind of awkward, full rangey sort of way. I, I did it so that I could hit the area that I wanted to hit. Because in the beginning stages of training back a long time ago, my back was not my strongest point. My arms were, and I was getting all this arm development and all this shoulder development, but my back wasn't growing. And I discovered it was about efficient range of motion. That's, that's what you have to do. You have to use the back efficiently. And for each person, it'll be subtly different, but if you notice you're not getting back development, maybe you need to uh, adjust the exercise so that way your back is hitting failure, your back is taking the stress, like your upper back, right? Not just your lower back, just burn it out, and then your upper back, you can keep on rowing, you know? Doesn't make sense to give up the set then. One more set. Oh, one more. And then that'll be it for back. Sometimes I just do three or four heavy sets and that's it. Sometimes I do more. When I'm at the gym, I tend to do more because there's more angles I can work with. But 
because I want to jump on Blacko and play a couple more Blacko games tonight. You know, I don't want to do, I don't want to work on forever, right? And uh, yeah, one of my patient supporters, Andrew, hasn't been on Call of Duty Blackout lately, so man, I'm, I'm looking for you, Andrew. I'm looking for you. So yeah, one more set, one more set. One more back training shot. Let's move the let's move the camera angle. Let's move the camera angle. Okay. Let's see here. Are we right there. Probably gonna stand not there, not there. And I'm probably gonna be standing right here, but when I back up, I'll be here. And that's where the focus box is, so I gotta make sure that I'm in the focus box. Alright. You see how challenging this stuff is? Yeah. Pre-planning, pre-planning. Twenties, man. So the thing is about the thing is about dumbbell curls is that you have to perform them in a way that you feel like this is hitting failure, not. The shoulder itself, you know. So you can see because of my hockey injuries, right? Because I tore rotator cuff here and dislocated this one. My shoulders come forward a bit. So because of that, the elbow will come back a bit. So that's more of a natural movement for me. Whereas maybe if the labrum was more intact, maybe the shoulder or the elbow would stay more here instead of coming back. I don't know. But one thing I know is follow the feeling, not the idea, and you're going to get a lot more gains that way. So. Uh, some people feel they need to go down all the way and then come up all the way because they say that's the right way to do it. But I always found that that hit the, the shoulders more and a lot of times those are the same guys that are preaching that don't have arms a lot of times. So uh, you have to trust what you're feeling, you know? And if this is hitting failure, if you're burning in there, like it's crazy in there, then you know you're doing something right. You know? So I'm just going to do three sets of this. another angle here. Uh, 
tight, tight. Feeling right here. A lot of break gals today for some reason. So, uh, two more sets and I'll do some triceps. I've been enjoying doing triceps. It's good to find, it's really good to try to find body parts you like to train and use those as your focal point, almost like your carrot to get you in the gym. So when you enjoy training one or two body parts, maybe you don't like training other ones. Then there's, you know, those type A personality types like you guys out there like, I enjoy training everything. Everything's awesome. Everything's perfect. You know, well, trust me on this. You're gonna go through times in your career or in your training career where you may have an injury or you might have uh, some sort of reason why a certain exercise is just not the favorite one for you anymore. Like say, you know, you're recovering from something. Say, say you tweak your back or something you know, doing something outside the gym, maybe playing golf, like whatever, right? And then you go to do squats. Squats used to be your favorite movement, but now all you feel is back pain until, until you go through that recovery period, right? Then obviously squats are not gonna be your favorite movement anymore because there's gonna be some pain that's other than the exercise pain, it's gonna be actually injury pain that keeps you from liking it. But um, sometimes there's just preference too. Sometimes you just prefer certain exercise. Sometimes some exercises you feel more of a connection. You feel like you get more results. Um, so yeah, it's, it's good to try to ride that positivity and say, okay, I really enjoy doing this and this feels good. And then just go into that, just enjoy it, you know? And, and there's gonna be times where certain body parts of yours are gonna get more results than others. Some body parts, no matter what you do, they just do not wanna grow, but then another body part grows like crazy. So uh, the body seems to adapt this way. It doesn't always adapt everywhere at once. Sometimes it goes through periods of time where one body part uh, just just balloons up and you're like fuck I'm doing everything the same as I usually do <laughs> what's going on you know but it's just like everything reaches uh, critical mass the the food the sleep the stress level and the nutrition I mean nutrition is the food sorry uh, oh, what's the other one your training technique your, your program or the exercises like it all is is a perfect mix of stimulus and the ability to recuperate from that stimulus and then you go through a growth spurt so yeah, so enjoy it, just enjoy it, right? You're gonna go through times. I find too many people focus on what they're not good at, and then they let that negativity over, overthrow them, right? And I think everybody has been there. Everyone, and myself included, a long time ago, you know, like, where I'd be like, shit, you know, I want this body part better, that body part better, but this one's the one that's actually adapting. Well, you're better off using the positivity and just trusting that whatever's happening in that body part that is adapting will eventually transfer to the other one, as long as you just keep at it. Keep experimenting with exercises, keep trying different things, but sometimes it's just timing. That's it, sometimes it's just timing. said that uh, you know nothing in their training was working for them nothing at all until they finally started eating and that's so true I mean eating is a big part of it and, and a lot of people get too fixated on the cutting all the time trying to run a deficit in their food trying to cut out body fat all this kind of stuff and although I think there's an ideal body fat level for you you don't want to get too caught up in just being lean from diet alone if anything you want to be lean from your training mostly and the diet comes in to, let's just say, add some extra tweaks to, to the cutting phase. But it isn't something you're dependent on totally. I mean, and I'm talking about general lifestyle. I mean, when you're competing for a show, that's different. It's like you're, you're trying to get down to such a lean body fat level that you can't maintain for any period of time. You can only maintain it for a week or two, or maybe maybe a month or two, but it's not really a good long-term plan for a bodybuilder to walk around like that eventually your metabolism will shut down and you'll start to put on body fat even though you're dieting hard. So you don't want to overstress the system. You don't want to put it into a phase where it feels like it's always going to be starving. You don't want the body to ever think that it's starving. 
Not for too long, because if it does think that, then it'll have a tendency to put on fat more until your metabolism comes up again. And hopefully it does, right? So, but as you get older, you'll notice that your metabolism shuts down a little bit and it slows down a bit. Like me, I could eat everything but the kitchen sink and be pretty lean back in the day, but um, you know, as you get older, there's some advantages to that too. It's easy to put on muscle, right? But, but yeah, there's, there's plus and minuses. But the bottom line is, nourish the body, build the metabolism, you know, you want it to be able to burn a lot of calories and you want the body to know it's safe to put on muscle. It's safe. You can have more food to feed it, right? There's not much point in having 10 children if you don't have a job to support those 10 kids. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like being on welfare and then you have 17 kids. It's like, probably not the smartest idea, right? Okay, let me see here. It'll be right there. Now sometimes I'll lean back in these ones because my leaning back can get a bit of stretch in the bicep, like an incline curl almost. There you go, that's good. You feel the stretch in the, in the long head doing that, right? Okay, let's do something else now. Now, like I talked about in the last video, you can do these like this, and that's good. But you're gonna get uh, more medial tricep on this, and it'll be harder on the elbows for some people. Never do it like this, though. Never do it like that. That'll screw your elbows up. And this hits the long head. All right, I'll just change the shot there. Okay, I'm just gonna do about three sets of this just to get a pump and then it'll then be done. So that's about a four, so I'll lean down here. It's like, it's like a four body part workout, right? But I mean, I do different variations all the time, so it's not like I'm set in stone and you, I'm not, it's not like I'm ever set in stone really with my workouts. Like I do what I feel I need to do and basically how the body's speaking to me at the time. But I do have workout programs on my website, as you guys all know, and uh, that's basically the template I follow. Like it's a general template. It's, it's kind of, I deviate a little bit, but that's, that's pretty much what I do, right? So yeah, here's some, uh, these are called skull crushers for those of you that don't know, or French nose.
All right, last angle. Let's do another angle here. All right, that's a fancy angle. See, now I can talk to you all endearing like, you know, kind of like that kid Mikey from the Life Plan cereal. I don't even remember that commercial, but it's from the 80s. So you guys that remember the 80s, Life Brand cereal, there was Mikey. Mikey likes it. I think he was sitting like this at the table. So. <laughs> All right, last set of skull crushers. I'm taking about a minute rest, just about, a, basically a minute, a minute and a bit for triceps here. All right, so that's my live workout. I did a bit of a live workout, I haven't done this in a while, but I will do it more if you guys like it. Uh, especially for the Patreon people. See if they want more of this, I'll put something like this up once in a while. So, but thanks a lot for watching, and if you need to help me, just go to naturalandbodybuilding.com, and thanks to the Patreon supporters, and uh, take care for now. Mountain. <laughs>